In this video, I'm going to be showing all the details about how to set up this uh, laser cutter uh, because we recently just replaced the computer for it. So um, how can we use the settings uh, to do that? And I have it connected via the Ethernet cable here. And so you can just send the, the files through the, the Ethernet cable. You don't have to plug in a USB. Setting up a new computer, the first thing that you want to check is that you do have the little USB that comes with it. This is like the, uh, it, came, it has the codes that uh, communicate, it's like a little software that uh, communicates with your laser cutter. Without it, you can't run the software. Now with the computer booted, there's basically uh, two softwares that you have to install. I have uh, SmartCarve uh, 4.3. So here's the website. I'll put the link in the in the description, but you want to do cutting software, smart carve, and download um, this one here, the output software, smart carve 4.3. You're going to download this and also the USB one as well. Files you need to download one is smart curve. 4.3 or its latest version currently it's 4.3 and then it's YM plug uh, this is to if it can't detect that USB that we plugged in the back so first uh, you can install the USB you just hit yes and just go through the install prompts and then it has this install USB driver and I already installed it here, but you just install that. And then also the Smart Carve installation. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It just, just goes through the installation and, and install it. The question will ask you what version it is, and it's kind of based on the display. So you just want to, this one is version 5 without the vision. Um, so, and you can tell by the layout of the buttons here. After you do the installation, it gives you many different types, like the fourth version um, based on your system. And you can just go through until you kind of get the same layout or the, uh, of your system. In, in my case, it's just the fifth normal system. So on a fresh install, I like to have the grid um, usually it comes with a, a blank file like this, but if you go to grid, I put it on the grid normally, and then we can actually, on the right hand side over here, we can set up the ethernet port. So I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna have to use the ethernet port, and on the side of the machine, you're going to just plug it in, and at the back of your machine here, I plugged it in there. So I'm going to connect to the machine via the Ethernet cable. You can turn on the machine here with the button. That will power up the, the machine. It'll do its self-centering, all that good stuff. Now on this display, you're going to put ZU the z-axis click on that and it's going to give you many options here and you'll see we have IP config so we can scroll over to IP config and then hit enter and you can see right here this is the IP address of the machine and you can change this to match the IPA address of your PC. It has to be the same subnets with the gateway. And if that matches with the machine, if it matches with the machine, then we can uh, link it. So to figure out which IP address to use, um, What I did is, sometimes you may have Wi-Fi. So disable Wi-Fi. 
because I only want to use the Ethernet uh, port. Okay. So after disabling Wi-Fi, on the search bar at the bottom, type in CMD. CMD will give us command prompt. So go into the command prompt. It'll give you this black box. And then what you're going to do is you're going to type in ipconfig. And ipconfig will give you uh, your current IP address. So you want to look for Ethernet because that's the hardwire. You don't want to be used in the wireless because the wireless will have its own IP address. But we want to connect through the Ethernet port, right? And this is the computer's IP address, 192.168.1.10. And yours will be different. But based on this, um, the laser cutter must have the same beginning numbers of its subnet. So this is 255, 255, 255. That means that these three um, IP addresses right here, these numbers must be the same on the machine, 192.168.1. And the zero means you, you can change it to another number so that we can communicate with it. The computer's IP address is 10, the last digit. And so the laser cutter can't be 10. I'm just going to put it a random number above 10. And I chose 50. We can show, we can show this right here. I already um, used this. Here's the numbers right here. Um, so I'm going to just choose a, a number bigger than this to, to make a static IP address on the machine. So let's go over to the machine. I'll show you that. Here's the machine. You see I have... 192.168.1.50. It just can't be 10 because 10 is the com the PC that we're we're uh, connecting to, right? And to change it, it's quite simple. You just hit the uh, arrow key. You'll see the little cursor moves, and then you can press up and down to change the digit. So that's uh, changed there. And then you, after you're done, you hit enter to get back to it. Okay, so we go hit the center button to go to the next uh, sub, sub uh, nets one, and I chose 50. You can choose anyway, and the default gateway is the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. So after you hit that, change it to uh, a static IP address on the same subnet as your PC. Now we can communicate with it. Um, I'm just going to hit OK. Now we know that this is 192.168.1.50. Let's put this and ping it. So what the ping command does is I'll send some packets to the machine and see if it receives it. So let's uh, ping it. The command is P-I-N-G, again in command prompt, ping. And then I'm going to put in that IP address that I used, 192.168.1.50. This is the IP address of the machine. Then I press enter. And you can see I get um, a reply with the time as well. And zero is lost. That means that that is a good IP address. I can successfully communicate with that. So after you do that, then in Smart Carve on the right hand side, you need to change the port because the port won't be, at initial setup, it won't be correct. So I click on port. This dialog appears. And you can change the numbers, uh, and you need to add your machine with the correct uh, number. So, for example, 192.168.1. Let's say it was 101. You can give a name of the machine. Okay, I'm just going to give some random name. And then you hit add. Okay, give it some time. It added it right here with the that IP 
address, you can add multiple machines. And to see if it communicates with it, to connect it, you just hit the connect button. This connection is not going to work because I don't have a machine there, but um, I already have set up one right here that is connected. But if I try to hit connect, it says invalid port because I don't have a machine there. I already have set one up that has the correct one and I hit connect and it says valid point port. When it says valid port, it turns green. That means that I have, you can select the machines down in here. I, uh, this one is correct, it says valid port. You can hit start and stop. Uh, let's just put, I'm gonna put a little drawing on, on the screen. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna put a, little, a line on the screen. Okay, we'll just end the line here. And let's say I wanted to start. You can see it says processing and I can also press stop. So now, after I've drawn my uh, file, this is actually connected to the machine. Machine here, I don't have to do anything really. It's actually already connected through the wire. I can, let's say I just put the, I'm just gonna put the origin right here where it currently is. I can frame it. I just frame the, and that's communicating the dimensions of the uh, CAD file I have on my PC. Now the coordinates, the other important setup is the coordinate, the origin and the coordinates because how, where do you want zero, zero to be? And you can actually choose zero, zero to be any location on your bed. Um, I've chosen zero, zero to be at the top right hand corner and I kind of cut this way, uh, but you can choose any location and its path. But whatever you, you choose to do, you want to make sure that when it cuts, it's it's cutting how you want it to cut, okay? That's based on your own preference. And so what I did is I drew an arrow on my machine to verify that it's cutting in the same orientation that I have on my computer. So it's not reversed, uh, it's just more uh, logical that way. And so to do that is just do a quick sketch of an arrow on your machine. So you can see I've chosen that the orientation is uh, zero, 00 at the top right hand corner. So what you want to do is just draw a small arrow like that or something that has some sort of orientation. And so when I cut, I want to verify that my arrow is going from the top right down like this, okay? And run the machine and make sure that you, you get it the same orientation. It just makes it more uh, based on your own preference again, where you want that or right. On my first trial, let's say I cut, this is the correct one, but when I first cut, I got this and that's the wrong orientation, okay? Because based on my uh, system here, this is the X positive and X minus. Based on your system, it will, it may cut something that you don't want. So how to change that, you can change it back on your, on your computer. What you do to change it is you click on modify coordinate and it'll come up with this right here. You can go right up and that's what I have right here. But let's say I want right down. I hit OK. You'll see that the coordinate X, Y axis went down here. And so that will be my origin or uh, reference point here. The reason why I like the origin up here is I put my sheet of wood right here, and so I want it closest to the origin. But if you're always cutting on right down here, uh, you could use this as your origin as well. Here's the other important setting. Is your positioning mode. 
that's when you're actually cutting. Uh, the, you can do anchor points, uh, mechanical origin, absolute origin. I just uh, chose current point, okay? So that's just where it is. It's gonna cut. And then after I'm done cutting, I wanna return to my offset when I, uh, when I, you can have an offset, right? Where, you, where you're gonna cut from a specific point. And so when I'm finished cutting, I just go back to my anchor point. And if you change that, it says operation successful. So these are the two settings that I have for mine. So I make these videos because sometimes I, even myself, I forget what I want. So I just record it and so I can play this back. So I'll just remind myself about all the settings. So here's my settings that I use specifically. Uh, yours may be different. One more setting that you may want to update is the size of your bed. Uh, you can do that by going to config. Um, and in here we have workspace okay because each machine may have a different dimension my dimension that i uh is 1000 millimeters wide by 800 uh high how do i know that um if we go over to the machine the the uh, we can find the width and the height here but how do I know that? Well, you can manually press the button and move the laser head. And if you look down here, it actually gives you the X and Y dimension, okay? And when I move it, I'm just gonna, you see it's increasing in the X. I'm just gonna go as far as it goes to the left. So it stopped, and you can see it stopped at a thousand millimeters. And then I'm gonna go press down and see how far it's gonna go down. Okay, it did 800. And you can also move the Z axis. This is the Z axis right here. You can, that's why it has the Z there. Uh, it has 3,000 millimeters. And so you want to put those parameters into your computer just so that you're not cutting off the bed size, okay? So update the workspace in the config. Yeah, cool. But that's the basic setup, how to connect via the ethernet. It's much better than using a USB and swapping it in and out. You just, Go and update your IP config, yeah. And make sure it's on the some same, same subnet. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped out. If you enjoy electronics or want to learn about how to fix electronics, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.